if you're not passionate about it, if you don't really enjoy it, people can read you like a book. Agreed. And it's the same thing for recruitment and consulting. If you don't really feel as if you're, you're really engaged and you're not really interested in it, people mm -hmm. will read you straight away. The brand out there, it, it, you're sharing information, you're mm -hmm. sharing knowledge, you're putting information that's useful to the industry out there, and you're, you're giving people news and views that uh, you hope are gonna be of value and of interest to people in the sector. And I think that's a healthy thing. And I think people will have mutual respect for that sort of activity. Do you know that you can be a reason for changing people's life from this channel? Probably you will ask me how. I will tell you how. My name is Ahmed Khalid and I am the host of this Unleashed podcast. We speak mainly around personal development and entrepreneurship. Our mission is unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential. And this is by interviewing CEOs, entrepreneurs and coaches physically in Dubai to extract their wisdom and change your life. Now, can I ask you to do me two favors? Firstly, can you hit the subscribe button? It helps this channel to grow more than you expect. Secondly, can I ask you also to refer this channel to three of your friends who can benefit from the values of this channel and you will be the reason of changing their life. Now, you can enjoy the episode. Kim, are you ready to unleash? Ahmed. I'm always ready to unleash. What is the percentage of unleashing today? I think 100%. The problem is nobody ever <laughs> taught me about leashing to begin with. I totally understand. <laughs> I understood that you have amazing experience in logistics and supply chain. Beside having a recruitment company, very big re recruitment company for the executive search. I'm just intrigued and inspired to understand how someone with this great experience in logistics, move and open something around the recruitment, especially for executive search. Well, first of all, Shukran, thanks so much, uh, <laughs> Ahmed, for inviting me on and bringing me on the show. It's I'm, a, I'm a great fan. I love Unleashed. <laughs> I've been following you and been following the progress. So Thank absolute you. pleasure to be here. Thank you. Ah, uh, so the question, how did it end up in, uh, in recruitment? So um, purely by chance. <laughs> like a lot of these things, to be honest. Uh, uh, evolution out of New Zealand, so I'm born in New Zealand, uh, brought up in New Zealand, very, uh, very simple stock. Uh, New Zealand, uh, we're very humble people and we're country people, in fact, most of us. Um, and there's only four million of us, so we all know each other. Uh, <laughs> but I'd always been in logistics and supply chain in, in New Zealand. Uh, my schooling, I always worked in trucking companies or factories and these things. And when I was at university, I, was, I started a trucking company, actually. I had a trucking company at the age of 18. And for 14 years, I worked uh, midnight till midday uh, doing deliveries six, seven days a week. Uh, started with one truck and built it up over a period of time and um, so that was the early days in New Zealand. I got launched into a career in uh, air freight, air cargo with an airline in New Zealand uh, after I sold my trucking company and I knew nothing about air cargo. Oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I was in there for six uh, six years or so and it was now SIVA, was TNT in those days. I ended up in Australia on a contract to help set up a telecoms company which I knew nothing about <laughs> but the people who were running it felt I had the leadership uh, skills to do that. I learned a lot. <laughs> uh, and then it was around the turn of the century. So uh, I decided to uh, sell out of that company and set up my own recruitment company. And here we are. <laughs> Very short life. I love this for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but what was the trigger? What was the, the, the motivation just to move yeah. from logistics? You have great experience sure. just moving and, mm. and helping senior executives yep. to find the great opportunities. Sure. So I was in Sydney, uh, uh, 90, 1999, uh, moved out of the telecoms company and uh, I was looking around for what will I do next? So I looked at the recruitment companies. I had a lot of friends that were in supply chain and logistics, but there were no specialist recruitment companies in that space. So I uh, woke up one morning with a complete uh, vision of setting up a, a company uh, just, just spe specializing in logistics and supply chain. Uh, I knew very little about the 
techniques and technology of recruitment. So I hired an ex-girlfriend from New Zealand. It cost me a lot of money. It was very challenging, very difficult situation, but bought her over and she taught, she was a very successful recruiter and taught me how to recruit. And uh, we started from scratch in 1999, 24 years ago. And how did you move to UAE? You started from Sydney, right? Yeah, how did you expand it? I, I saw it was in your LinkedIn when you share Uh, some related topics or just the op oppositions. Sure. It's all over the world, right? Yeah, well, not all over the world, but uh, we, we started a small company in Sydney, It's had a couple of uh, shareholders that came into the business with me. Uh, they moved on after a few years, but the clients that we took on in Australia that we were finding uh, candidates for, for mid to senior range roles in the supply chain in Australia, uh, all were international companies. Mm -hmm. And they began to draw us into other services. So we got into consulting, contract management, um, also got into a lot of uh, recruitment around different areas in the supply chain that others weren't really doing. So quite specific roles, a lot about technology. A lot of these companies were in Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai, India, in Dubai. So here I ended up in Dubai in 2002, uh, recruiting for DHL actually, was my very first client wow. up here. Wow. And uh, what are those competencies or just the skills I know that most people, they, they think that all the recruitment or just mm. the skills and competencies mm. for, uh, uh, let's say, junior, senior and executive are the same. But what are those skills or just the competency that, that you're looking after in, mm. in th those executives when you just uh, go for recruitment? Oh, to be honest, I mean, it's, it's, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, in terms of industry types, when you, you get it down to uh, the, the specialization of supply chain and logistics, you're looking for the same sort of capabilities mm -hmm. in senior people. Uh, really common sense, yes, okay, and you've heard many people talk about the, the technical skills are required and, and all of that. But and then it comes down to where are the leadership capabilities mm -hmm. in people, but more importantly, where is the alignment between what a company wants, what an organization mm -hmm. wants to bring somebody in their organization. What do they want them to actually achieve? How does that fit the strategy, the tactics of the organization? And this this is where the skill set comes in to actually do the work, do the hard job of spending time mm -hmm. with the client and be passionate enough to really understand what the company is doing, what their aspirations are, what their long-term goals are, what needs to be fixed now. And what sort of person do they need to come into the organization? Because the biggest problem is recruitment uh, when there's high turnover is that the recruiter has not done that work, has not spent enough time with the client to fully understand what their real needs are. And quite, quite often clients don't really fully understand what they need. So you've <laughs> got to actually assist in that area and, and work with them strategically. The other side is get under the, the, the bonnet of the candidate themselves. Mm -hmm. are, they, are they the sort of person that's required? Do they have the attitude? Do they have the sort of mentality? Do they have the sort of aspirations that are going to align? And it's, mm -hmm. it's a very, very finite thing to get those alignments right. Mm. What are the channels that you could bring? You spoke about like the, the, the companies, they mm -hmm. reach out to you mm -hmm. to bring some candidates. Yep. But how did you spot those talents and how did you get those opportunities with the right candidates? Well, it's a good question. And, and uh, it really has been, I wouldn't say it's been easy, but the strategy that ended up uh, dominating our, our search activity was being involved and being prepared to put out and contribute to the industry. Mm -hmm. So in the turn of the century, 99, 2000, we were asked to, because we're a specialist company in Australia at that stage, and as I said, spreading out and ultimately here, and we registered here in Dubai in 2000, 2005, was we were one of the few specialists at all in space, logistics and supply chain. So we were asked to speak at conferences. We would help run conferences. We actually set up our own conferencing company for six, seven years. We were right. partnered with a Singaporean organization. We ran a magazine as well, just contributing, not so much as a commercial outcome, but to contribute towards the industry. And that gave us the ability to be able to network and get to know everybody in the industry in different cities all around the world. So we were very pleased to be able to you know, network that way, contribute, and. It's the great thing about reciprocity. The thing about reciprocity, if you believe in it, and we certainly do, is very much about, you know, be prepared to put out without anything in response in return, and it's amazing what comes your way. 
great one. So, uh, in that case, what is the best channel that you 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 bring in those talent? Is it through uh, uh, LinkedIn? Is it through like networking? What what are the most or just the common uh, channel that you bring those talents to those companies? Yeah, I mean it's a, it's really a combination mm -hmm. of all of those things. I mean some of our uh, some of our finest clients or best relationships that we have mm -hmm. uh, have been with us for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and that we've met at events, we've met uh, online originally, uh, or they've seen what we've been doing online and they've asked us to come and talk to them, come and present to, because we, we do executive coaching as well. So much of what we do was segue one thing into the other. The consulting arm of our business, which is you know uh, actually quite quite large up here in Dubai compared to other parts of our of our operation in APAC, um, it will generate business for our recruitment because mm -hmm. they'll have consulting and then they'll say we need somebody to run that warehouse or to run that free zone or that distribution operation or you know the 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 different elements of what's going on inside their business they'll either need some assistance and support to the consulting side of it mm -hmm. or they'll want somebody in there permanently or maybe even on an interim basis so these things sort of feed off each other uh, but in terms of where you're spotting the talent again the events i mean I, mm -hmm. these days Mm -hmm. Normally, I'll be emceeing. So the last five or six years, I've been <laughs> emceeing at events where I, I met you. I originally. know you from that, yeah. Yeah, sure. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually very easy. Can you see your, your, your power and your energy <laughs> even right now? The same it's, all over the whole, you know. The good thing the about event. it, you, you don't have to prepare a speech or anything else. You just turn up. You and speak from heart. <laughs> these, these people are coming. Here's the yeah. agenda. But again, it's, it's like you would, would unleash. If you're not passionate about it, if you don't really enjoy it, People can read you like a book. Agreed. And it, the same thing for recruitment and consulting. If you don't really feel as if you're you're really in, engaged and mm -hmm. you're not really interested in it, people mm -hmm. will read you straight away. And mm -hmm. you, in that case, you should be doing something else. I mean, the, the, uh, the rate of success in recruitment is very, very low. You know, I would say less than one or two companies out of 10 survive for more than 12 months, like a lot of entrepreneurial mm -hmm. businesses. Because, you know, it, it takes time. You've got to have a lot of patience. You, you've got to be prepared to do the hard yards, to do the hard work. And I think that's one of the things, being a Kiwi, is we're used to hard work. You know, we, we're, we're simple people. We, we stick to our knitting. We, we, we're prepared to, to put the hard work in um, before we get the results. I agree. Uh, I can relate to whatever you said right now because I see many executives they underestimate the power of networking mm. and they keep their all of their life they stay in small circle inside maybe their company and they don't nourish their relationship out of this yeah. and one of the biggest i would say uh, benefit of networking and going to the event this one thing that you position yourself in front of the opportunities you never know where yeah. which door can be opened yeah. most people they stay inside the small circle and they just don't chase anything yeah. so it's, it's i think it's a good opportunity to go for networking position yourself look at the opportunities sure. around you yeah and I, and I think the classic example coming from from the face to face which of course was was stunted during uh, during COVID uh, as people like yourself uh, and, and, and us and, and many others of course as well uh, not that many in supply chain and logistics but uh, but you know so it's not too crowded a space but but uh, getting online and we, we decided you know when COVID started everything stopped everybody's freaking out and the world is going with what's happening with the pandemic and will we all survive and and going online was a fantastic idea so we ended up with just an accumulation we'd been at it like yourself for for a number of years before uh broadcasting mm -hmm. uh just uh, to keep the brand out there but during COVID, of course it lifted and now we've got over two hundred fifty thousand followers on linkedin wow. mm -hmm. and uh not at the great rate of expansion that you're experiencing <laughs> at the moment my friend but but uh you know that's kept the brand out there it, it, you're sharing information you're mm -hmm. sharing knowledge you're putting information that's useful to the industry out there. Uh, you're, you're giving people news and views that uh, you hope are going to be of value and of interest to people in the sector. And I think that's a healthy thing. And I think people have had mutual respect for that sort of activity. Unleash is the bridge between my purpose and my mission. And my mission is unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential.